Stay tuned to PBS 39 as we focus on the arts. We share the story of local music legend Dave Fry and take you to the South Bethlehem venue he co-created more than 40 years ago. Plus, an after-school program in Allentown provides a place for young people to pursue their passion for dance. Join us for these stories and more right now on Focus. Focus is for our community. Focus showcases the people, the places, and the issues that matter to you. Focus on what matters. You never know what you're going to see when you tune into Focus. Support for Focus is provided by Univest, banking, insurance, investments, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for Focus, recorded at the PPL Public Media Center at PBS 39. I'm Laura McHugh. In this episode, we focus on the performing arts, beginning with a local music legend. In the 1970s, Dave Fry helped launch Bethlehem's Godfrey Daniels Folk Music Listening Room. Since then, his musical career has taken him from entertaining adults to children. Focus reporter Grover Silcox is here to tell us more. Grover? Thank you, Laura. Just about every major singer, songwriter, and band began their careers performing at small bars, bistros, and local hometown venues. In South Bethlehem, Dave Fry, a local musician, and Cindy Dinsmore created a room for musical artists to perform and hone their crafts. Since 1976, Godfrey Daniels has served as an oasis for both aspiring and popular folk artists. Here, they play their music and share their world with eager audiences. I had an opportunity to speak with Dave Fry and a singer-songwriter who performs at Godfrey Daniels about this amazing listening room. Nothing you say ever comes out right. Singer-songwriter Dina Hall performs the cover song of her album, Logic in the Heart, at Bethlehem's legendary listening room, Godfrey Daniels. Changes don't come easy. She honed her craft on this stage over the past 13 years. I had heard about this Godfrey's and I had come here at one time for an open mic. She kept coming back and the room became like an incubator for her developing talent. In the heart, I've learned, I've watched, uh, I've become extremely comfortable uh, on any si almost any size stage. Dave Fry, founder of Godfrey Daniels and a folk musician himself, watched Dina evolve. She became a regular at the open mic, uh, was working on her own songs, uh, developing her stagecraft, uh, meeting other folks in the community. I'm really proud of the fact that she's uh, learned from all those experiences, not only uh, watching the professionals on stage, but, but uh, applying it to her own stagecraft. Since its inception in 1976, the nonprofit membership driven Godfrey Daniels has served as home for local performers and an oasis for professionals on the national circuit who thrive on the intimacy of this 100 seat room. Some performers will put on the show. The show doesn't work here. You have to show uh, a slice of your humanity. My son is very calm. He's an engineer. He's very calm. He's very clean cut. He so comes up, Mom, you got to go play something upbeat. I had to play the song, which was their wedding song. Aww. Aww. Happy the moon. You have to talk to the audience and you have to play your tail off because the audience knows the difference. Um, you, can't, you can't hide it. The crowd is open to listening. They really do appreciate listening. They're here to appreciate the, the, the soul and the emotion that's going into it. On this Friday night at Godfrey Daniels, Dita opens for singer-songwriter Christine Hevrilla, who joins her for a song they do together. For 
performers here sent strong community support for their music. There is a com community aspect here that supports all the, all the performers, whether they're amateur or professional. Dave and the other performers who call Godfrey Daniels home find that same community support outside the club too. Dave plays gigs with his band Rock Roots or solo at schools for kids or even at his alma mater, Lehigh University, on a weekday afternoon. But wherever else they go for gigs, Dave, Dina, and hundreds of their fellow performers call Godfrey Daniels home base. Here you really just have to trust the performer to take you away. You really have to be open to being entertained. Sometimes an hour more, see Godfrey Daniels, the little listening room with a big draw for performers and audiences alike. For Focus, I'm Grover Silcox reporting. Thank you, Grover. In our next story, we turn from music to dance to visit a local nonprofit organization dedicated to giving all kids the opportunity for an art education. For more, here's Focus reporter Brittany Garzillo. Laura, for about a decade, Escape Dance Studio in Allentown has provided a place for young people to pursue their passion for dance. The after-school program allows children and adults to take dance classes like ballet, jazz, and hip-hop at little to no cost. To quote Allentown resident and Escape member Wesley Gonzalez, it's something you have to witness for yourself. Nice and easy. Okay, here we go. Signal. Since Wesley Gonzalez first stepped foot into the Escape Dance Studio in Allentown nearly six years ago. Okay, here you go. He's experienced something extraordinary. It's been life changing, honestly. Left arm out, out. Wesley is one of about 175 individuals from Allentown and surrounding communities who participate in an after school dance program known as Escape located in Allentown's Center City. Escape is a dance program for youth ages 6 to 22 in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and we offer very low cost education for the kids just to give everyone the opportunity to dance. It's one, two, three, tombe coupe. With a passion for choreography, Dawn Blanco teaches dance full time at William Allen High School in Allentown, as well as directs at Escape Dance Studio. A lot of our families cannot afford what it costs at a typical dance studio, which it could be around $40, $50 for one class. Instead, students like Wesley can take one to two different types of dance classes at Escape for $8 a month. Three or more cost $12 a month. And for some... Some students do not have to pay anything uh, because we received a grant from the city of Allentown that pays for those students that live within a certain proximity to the studio. I never had structure in my life. I never, I was never organized. I was always late for everything. I always had problems speaking with other people. And like over the years, I've just been building the person that I've always wanted to be with the help of my teammates and everyone in here. I want to help kids the way I was helped. Let's go over again. Portia McDuffie is a graduate of the program. Today, she teaches 11 classes a week. And boom. On this day, Portia pays it forward as she instructs a room full of students in the junior hip hop company. Well, I've always had a really strong passion for dance, but I didn't really have the money to pay for a class. So this was a, an amazing outlet for me. No coincidence, the program is called Escape. It gets kids off the streets and teaches them dance skills. I wanted them to feel secure and that they don't have to be shy and that they can have friends and be out there and live their dream and create a dance family. I think like this is family. The program, which started in 2006, is offered through the Allentown based nonprofit Youth Education in the Arts, also known as YAT. They learn more than just dance, they learn about teamwork and cooperation, just the sheer idea of what it is to work hard. We want them to feel like they can um, reach their dreams no matter how much money you have. 
On the third floor studio, Wesley and his peers in the Contemporary Company practice for their end of year dance recital. Exif has really helped me like build confidence, it helped me overcome my fears, and it made me who I am today. The next generation is the key, the kids are the key, so if they have something, an outlet, whether it's dance or even soccer or basketball, something, a hobby, then maybe the world will get, I don't know, a little happier, <laughs> a little better. <laughs> For the betterment of the program, Don and Portia agree they could use a few upgrades. We need a new space. We, we've outgrown our space. Little things like um, new stereo system, you know, a lot of our stuff is going. But there's one thing that remains constant. There's so much heart and passion here with these kids and just seeing their desire to learn and how hungry they are. It fuels you as a teacher. For students like Wesley in their final year of the program, it's fuel towards the future. My goals for the future, well, I always wanted to own my own dance studio or to become a dance teacher, or at least to dance professionally for like Beyonce, Lady Gaga. Perhaps one day passing along the advice that echoes inside Escape. If you want it, go for it, do it. Get out there and just try and do it. Don't be shy, jump out your box and believe in yourself. A message that's written on the walls and in the hearts of students and teachers at Escape Dance Studio. For Focus, I'm Brittany Garzillo reporting. Thank you, Brittany. Returning to music, the Lehigh University Choral Arts Group has a rich tradition of making music. In 2014, we learned more as the group prepared for a special performance in Carnegie Hall. I'm Stephen Samets, and I'm the Ronald J. Ulrich Professor of Music at Lehigh University. Choral Arts is an umbrella name that we have for our choral union, which is our community group combined with our uh, university choir, mixed choir of undergraduates, plus our women's group Dolce and our male uh, ensemble, the Men's Glee Club. So, all of that comes to 200 plus singers that will be on stage and at Carnegie we will be joined by another 130 of our alumni. So there'll be about 400 people performing at Carnegie. This is a performance of my choral symphony, Carmina Amoris, which means songs of love. This is a setting of medieval clerical texts and doesn't seem that much has changed from medieval times to our own. These are very romantic texts, although in Latin. Um, my name is Dan Shin, a master's student at Lehigh University studying uh, computer engineering. The choral tradition at Lehigh has been going on for nearly 150 years now. So that, to begin with, is an amazing thing, to be a part of something that has lasted for such a long time. I'm Dabney Bryce. I'm from New Windsor, New York. I'm a first year here at Lehigh and I hope to study global studies and modern languages and linguistics. I'm just really excited and really honored to be a part of this group that's going to be singing at Carnegie Hall. Um, it's so unrealistic in a way, like it's still like a dream to me to be able to walk when I get there on the same stage as so many famous people have been there and so many fantastic performers, that's going to be really amazing. Being in choir itself is such an energetic um, experience for me. It's hard, I'm not going to lie, it is pretty difficult, but when you love something as much as I love singing, you make time for it. They throw themselves into the project wholeheartedly. And I think for them to have this moment to shine is a landmark occasion for Lehigh. It sends a strong message that Lehigh has got a true commitment to the arts. Our next story features the often whimsical works of a nearby marionette theater that has entertained kids and families in and around the Lehigh Valley for 40 years. Here's Focus reporter Grover Silcox with the story of Mock Turtle Marionette Theater. 
Thanks, Laura. Doug Royston's Mock Turtle Marionette Theater entertains kids and families at schools and theaters in and around the Lehigh Valley and at the Ice House, his home base in the city of Bethlehem. Here's a look inside the Ice House as Doug prepares his troupe of puppets and actors for Hans Christian Andersen's classical story of the Emperor and the Nightingale. Oh, oh, oh goodness gracious, look. He has brought tears to the Emperor's eyes. As a master puppeteer and director, Doug Royston breathes life into his puppets and their performances. With a little help from our friends, the ghosts. Look, 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 look. What I'll do is bring the emperor closer to you. Doug established Mock Turtle Marionette Theater in 1978 and named it after a character in Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. In Bethlehem, he's turned the second floor of the Charles A. Brown Ice House into his wonderland. our resident artists. Oh, look at my hands. <laughs> That's what we call the loft up there, and that was the, the puppet theater. Let me see it again. Okay, keep it. Mock Turtle performs original shows and adaptations of classic folktales for kids and families at the Ice House and other venues throughout the Lehigh Valley. For his next show, Doug has created some very special puppets to star in Hans Christian Andersen's The Emperor's Nightingale. <laughs> Marionettes are very physical, but these are even more physical. And this is weird because, not weird, but this is kind of exciting because it's, it's two people uh, working uh, together on the same physical thing. You got a, this pole, that we call it a back pole. <laughs> And you can actually twist this and make this move and go forward and move. Oh, we have to find something. Look at the amount of physical, physicality this is. This is a very physical thing to do. Muddy brown feathers. With this kind of puppet, the audience actually sees the puppeteers. Basically, if you are totally absorbed in doing the puppet, then the audience will totally absorb itself in the puppet. Doug finds inspiration for his creations in each show script and crafts new puppets for every story. It is about the script, and it's not necessarily about words, it's about how the play moves. How's the stories told? You have a notion of what in, what's interesting to kids, you know, and then you know at a certain point you better Think things better get crazy, you know? <laughs> Once the script is written, Doug sketches the characters. The puppet making process is a bunch of little drawings, little drawings, maybe that big. You, you might make the full drawing based on that and then rework them as mechanical things from there. Doug also makes set pieces and props. I'm not gonna do a lot of brown, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just jam a little brown in here. Alongside the show's assistant artistic director, Doug fine tunes individual scenes. We went through like puppet pairings throughout the play and just looked at, okay, how are these puppets relating to each other? And is there a chemistry that's going back and forth? For this show, the Bach Choir of Bethlehem will perform along with Mock Turtle. So with Bach and his music in mind, Doug designed the puppets for the Emperor's Nightingale. This is all Bach uh, period clothes, German 18th century clothes. It's a wonderful chance to really take this great story and add uh, Johann Sebastian Bach to it, and wow, what fun. This is it, guys. This is your moment. The kind of fun that inspires, enriches, and entertains through the ageless art of puppetry and master puppeteers like Doug Roy. Would there be, really be such a creature in my empire? For Focus, I'm Grover Silcox reporting. Thank you, Grover. The musicians in our next story believe all students have the right to music education, no matter how rich or how poor.
That's why every week they spend two hours tutoring kids in Allentown and eight hours teaching them to sing and play instruments. The end result, well-rounded students with improved test scores. Here's Focus reporter Brittany Garzillo with more. Thanks, Laura. Bach, Beethoven, and Mozart, they are some of the world's most noteworthy musicians. But before they created classical music as we know it, they all started somewhere. Today, a new wave of aspiring musicians are getting their start in a free after-school program at Roosevelt Elementary in Allentown. Long after most kids have left school for the day, the halls at Roosevelt Elementary seem empty, except for the sounds of song and string ensemble coming from the gymnasium. Here, students like third grader Caleb Rash embark on a dream that may not be possible otherwise. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a musician. You do? Instruments themselves are so expensive and, you know, a cello, I, it's just not possible right now for us to be able to afford something like that. So the fact that this program is free to the kids, it's an experience <laughs> and it's, we're so grateful for it. Caleb is among the more than 90 Allentown students and thousands more across the country involved in the after-school program El Sistema, which provides free instruments and musical instruction to underprivileged kids. The goal of El Sistema is to ensure our students, of course, are learning the music and the vocals, but it's the so social piece, the partnerships they're building with community members, with each other, and just really getting to be a great team. On this day, students grab their string instruments like violas and violins and head into the gymnasium to practice for an upcoming concert. Last chance. Who has not had their instrument tuned yet? They wait anxiously as program director Stephen Liu and his teaching artists carefully tune each instrument. It's incredibly empowering and for our kids to be coming from a community where they may not feel like they have the resources or the support or that they don't have that identity of someone who's truly special, to have that gift of something with, of monetary value, of something that is special that even their parents may not have had access to, may not, is just an incredibly powerful vehicle for us to literally transform the community that we're in. El Sistema Lehigh Valley started in Allentown in 2011. Funded through grants and fundraising by the Allentown Symphony Association, the program is inspired by the original El Sistema program that began in Venezuela in 1975. El Sistema, translated to The System, currently reaches over half a million Venezuelan children and aims to transform communities through music, one needy child at a time. The El Sistema program was piloted here because we were one of the oldest community schools and we had a lot of the systems in place to take on a really big program like this. So we're really thankful for the Allentown Symphony Association and all the other partners in the community who were able to bring this to our school. It's extremely important to have music as part of after school. The kids just enjoy that time together, um, playing music, learning vocals. I mean, it just, it enhances everything they already do during the day, but it just is in a different way. Because of district budget cuts, students at Roosevelt Elementary have music class about nine times a year. One of the things that the arts has struggled with is that we are arguing for that the arts are valuable because the arts are valuable. Arts for art's sake. And what El Sistema is, is cha cha transforming that idea to say arts for the community, arts for society, arts for each child, arts for everybody. That music is an inherent right for everybody. I love when a student picks up an instrument and their eyes just light up and you know that it's sparking other pieces of their core being. It's a look of concentration that graces the face of second grader Antonella Garcia as she guides her bow to each note. You can learn lots of stuff and really cool stuff that probably you never thought you could learn. Going to the trips, going to the symphony halls going out to play anywhere else. I mean, she, she loved it. About four times a year, Antonella and her peers perform concerts at Roosevelt and at Miller Symphony Hall in Allentown. I honestly cry every single time because I'm just so proud of him for being up there and working so hard. For the parents of children involved in El Sistema, this after-school activity is music to their ears. Because it's great. And not just, not just the program, it's the old people that are involved in this, people that donate their money, you know, sponsors, everybody, everybody, it's, it's a real good thing. So building this identity for these children as somebody who's not only a student, but also as someone who knows something of value is absolutely tremendous. Stephen hopes a program like this will play an instrumental role in preparing each student 
for a future that's noteworthy. For Focus, I'm Brittany Garzillo reporting. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Until then, remember to focus on what matters. This program is recorded at the PPL Public Media Center at PBS 39 in Bethlehem.